My name is Nicole Frankie, and I am the sports dietitian for Centera Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. Today, we're going to be talking about nutrition for sports performance. So this is just a brief overview of what we're going to cover today. So we're going to be discussing macronutrients and their different importance in the diet, especially for athletes. And then we're also going to be talking about micronutrients as well and review how those are important for athletes. So the first macronutrient we're gonna talk about is carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are the primary source of energy or fuel for the body, especially during exercise. So I like to think of it like a gas tank in a car, right? So if you're driving a car, you want that gas tank to be fuel, you don't wanna run out of gas when you're going somewhere. The same thing goes for exercise. We don't want our bodies running out of energy when we're exercising because then we may start getting tired during exercise and may not perform at our absolute best, which is something that we don't want happening. So we want to make sure that we're having enough carbohydrates before, potentially during, and even after exercise to help with that whole exercise process and recovery. And what foods have carbohydrates? They're typically pretty easy to get in the diet. We can get them from bread, pasta, cereals, fruits, vegetables, and there's even some in milk, cheese, and some other foods as well. Next, we're going to talk about protein. So protein, something very common that athletes think about, they think about protein, making them stronger, building muscle and really improving their performance, which is true. We do wanna make sure that we're getting enough protein in the diet to make sure that we're performing at our best. So the one thing that's important to remember with protein is that it is not stored in the body, unlike carbs and fat. So what this means is that we need to make sure we're consuming enough protein at our meals and at our snacks, especially as an athlete, to make sure that we're performing at our best. If we don't have enough protein, we may not recover as well after workouts. You know, if if your goal is going to be muscle gain, you know, making those gains in muscle may be difficult if we're not consuming enough protein. And for athletes who follow a vegetarian or vegan diet, it is possible to follow those diets, whether, you know, that's your choice, but it is important to know that there are some nutrients such as vitamin B12 or riboflavin that are only found in animal sources. But with careful planning, preparation, you know, following a vegan or vegetarian diet as an athlete can be possible. If you're unsure, if you're an athlete, if you're meeting those needs for protein, Protein, you can always reach out to a dietitian and they may be able to help you to see if you are consuming enough protein. And finally, we have some protein sources on here as well. So we have like turkey, chicken, any fish, and some vegetarian or vegan sources such as tofu or edamame on there as well. And finally, our third macronutrient is fat. So fat is an important nutrient and we want to make sure that we have enough to provide energy for our body. It's very important in different cell functions and it works to absorb different nutrients um, and pair with those nutrients for absorption as well. So there are a lot of speculations, you know, going too high fat in the diet or too low fat in the diet. There is just the general recommendation to consume about 20 to 35% of your daily calories from fat and kind of sitting right in that range versus going very, very high in fat or very low in fat. Um, because again, we want to make sure that we're consuming kind of a balance with all the three different macronutrients as an athlete. And it is going to be important to monitor what fat sources we're consuming. So unsaturated fats are those that are the healthier fats some may say so like avocados nuts seeds fish you know fatty fish like salmon those are going to be have a lot more heart healthy and anti-inflammatory fat components to them so we would like to eat more of those versus saturated fats like butter or processed foods or if you think of a big steak with all that white fatty marbling on it um, those you know we kind of want to monitor how much we have of those and kind of find that balance between the two and again, just the food sources of fats as well, like nuts, nut butters, avocado, and any oils, like olive oil would be another example. Next, we'll talk briefly about micronutrients. So kind of brief summary of it all. There are a lot of different vitamins and minerals. We won't review every single one of them today, but they do have a lot of really important and various roles in the body, including bone health, immune health, energy production, and working with electrolytes. So there's a lot of roles in the body and they're very important. So you might think, how the heck do I get all these vitamins and minerals in my diet? And the biggest thing you can do is eat as varied of a diet as possible. So, you know, making sure you're eating different foods, trying different foods, eating, you know, eat the rainbow, as they may say, you know, try and eat different fruits and vegetables to get as big of a variety in your diet as possible to help get those different vitamins and minerals in the body. And just some examples, you know, vitamin D, some examples would be salmon, tuna, or like fortified orange juice or fortified dairy foods and iron on there as well. Um, red meat is an example of a meat source of iron, or we have leafy greens, um, which may be a source. 
Thank you for joining us for this presentation.